So um, I'm sorry for the interruption. Um, when you receive a bill from Philadelphia University, um, you will receive it for the semester. We will bill um, half of the annual rate, which we'll talk about a little later, um, for the fall semester, and then half of the annual rate for the spring semester. Because of that, your financial aid is listed on your award letter by the semester, but you'll also see a total amount for the year. But as your aid gets applied, it is semester-based. Um, if you're receiving any um, monies from any outside organizations, um, or from employers, please let us know. Um, we don't have that information up front when we package your financial aid, and that is something that we would need to know um, so that you don't receive um, more money than is actually allowed. So financial aid is awarded to um, undergraduate students with the assumption that you are full-time and that you'll be degree-seeking. If a student drops courses um, as they move through the year, um, that could change their financial aid um, eligibility. Just something to tuck away as your student moves through their academic career here um, is that they need to achieve academic progress. So we're going to look at that every semester and notify students if they don't achieve that. So what we're looking for at Philadelphia University is that the students complete at least 75 percent of their enrolled credits and they also have to maintain a 2.0 cumulative grade point average. Um, that's for the, the overall academic progress. Some specific awards may require a higher GPA and if that is true it would be specified in the communication that we sent to you telling you that. Um, but we will look at the academic progress every semester and we will let the student know if they um, are not achieving that mark. So when we sent you your financial aid award letter, we sent you two paper copies. They were inside the financial aid folder that we mailed to you in the envelope that was marked financial aid information enclosed. So I hope that you have all looked at it. Um, one of the copies of the award letter needs to be signed and returned to us. Um, the return date that we ask for it back is May 1st. If you send it back sooner, it does not commit you to attending Philadelphia University, but um, your deposit is what will um, commit you to coming. It's that um, we will keep that um, in your financial aid file and move your aid forward, assuming that you are coming, and hopefully you are. Um, so you need to sign your award letter and send it back. There may be other documents in that folder that you have to um, complete or other forms and we'll talk about them as we go through. But we um, gave you a lot of information in that folder and hopefully you will read it as you move through. Some students are selected by the government, um, some random, some not, for a process called verification. And if your student was selected for verification, we would have sent them an email communication giving them a link to a verification document. The verification process, for those of you that have been through this with other children, is now customized for each individual student. So we don't have a form that covers every scenario. So you have to use the link that's in the email communication in terms of the verification form. Also, we need a copy of your tax transcript from the IRS or you have to go back into your FAFSA record and use the IRS retrieval tool. So we either need your tax transcripts or the IRS retrieval tool has to be used for both the parent and the student if you were selected for verification. Um, your aid will not be deducted from your bill until this is completed. So if for some reason you are not um, moving forward with the, the um, information that we need, we will continually send you emails or send your student emails um, asking for what is missing. Okay, so now we'll talk about the different pieces of aid that you may see on your letter. Some students were awarded faculty scholarships and or faculty grants you would either receive one or the other of this type of aid. 
This notification would have been sent to you by our Director of Admissions. This, these types of awards are renewable for each year that your student is enrolled at Philadelphia University, provided that the student maintains the grade point average that is specified in the letter that you received. There are no additional forms needed to accept this piece of aid, and the annual amount that is listed on that letter that you received from Greg Potts will be split in half for each of the years that the student is here. Half of the amount will be credited in the fall semester, and half of the amount will be credited in the spring semester. For students that had Philadelphia University grants as a piece of their financial aid, these are need-based grants that would be, have been awarded to the student based on the information that was put on the FAFSA form. These are awarded to students assuming that they would be full-time each semester that they are um, enrolled for the, the next academic year. And there are no additional forms that the student needs to accept this other than signing the award letter. And again, the aid will be credited as shown on the um, financial aid award letter. Half of the annual amount will be credited in the fall and half will be credited in the spring. Students may have um, eligibility for a federal Pell Grant, and that would have been specified on the award letter if the student was eligible for that. This is a need-based grant provided by the federal government. It's um, based on the FAFSA information, and um, it corresponds directly to your family contribution that was determined from the FAFSA form. Um, some students who receive Pell also get selected for verification, so therefore your award may be estimated until you do complete the verification process. No additional forms are needed if you weren't selected for verification, and again, the award will be credited um, once the verification is done if needed, otherwise it's credited half of the amount in the fall and half in the spring. Students that um, were Pell recipients um, may have also received a federal SEOG award, Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant. These are also need-based awards, and this is based on funding that we get um, here at Philadelphia University from the federal government. Um, the awards will be specified right on the um, award letter. No additional forms are needed to accept this. And um, again, the awards are credited half in the fall and half in the spring. For students that had Perkins loan listed on their award letter, this is a um, need-based grant or loan. I'm sorry, this is a loan. And um, this is federal money that we um, administer here at the university. It's interest in principle deferred until the student graduates, hopefully graduates, um, or drops to less than half-time status. And um, repayment begins nine months after the student would graduate or drop to less than half-time status. The interest rate is 5%. And again, this is interest in principle deferred while the student is in school. In order to accept the Perkins loan, the student would need to complete a master promissory note, which was included in the folder that you received, a statement of rights and responsibilities, which is a two-sided form, and also complete an entrance interview at the web address that's on your screen. This information is included in the packet that you did receive, but, um, and if you did not do this, we will remind you throughout the summer that you um, have not completed all the pieces that need to be done for this. There are um, two different types of entrance interviews that a student may need to do. So just realize that there's a one for Perkins, and we'll talk a little bit about the one for the Stafford loan. But if a student has both loan programs, they need to do two separate entrance interviews. OK. So now we'll talk a little bit about the Federal Direct Stafford loan. For those of you that had that listed on your um, award letter, this is a federal loan program. Eligibility is based on the information put on the FAFSA form. The interest rate that will be effective um, in July, July 1st, 13, will be 6.8%. The repayment of the Stafford loan begins six months after graduation. So while the student is in school, there it is interest in principle deferred if the student has the subsidized Stafford loan. 
The interest begins immediately upon graduation, but payment does not have to happen until six months into the grace period. The um, Stafford loans are, um, the eligibility is listed on the screen. So for a freshman student, they can borrow 3500 through the subsidized Stafford program, plus $2,000 through the unsubsidized Stafford program. The difference in the two programs, the subsidized versus unsubsidized, is who pays the interest. So for the unsubsidized portion, the um, principal is deferred, but not the interest. The student has the option to um, defer and not pay the interest until after they graduate, but it's recommended that they do pay that as they go along. So as a freshman level student, borrowing um, can go up to $5,500 between the subsidized and unsubsidized loan. When the student is a sophomore level, they can borrow $4,500 through the subsidized program and $2,000 through the unsubsidized program. When they're a junior, they can borrow $5,500 through the subsidized program and $2,000 through the unsubsidized program. When they're a senior, they can borrow $5,500 plus $2,000 unsubsidized. Um, students that are in the fifth year um, of the architecture program, when they get to that point, they will only have $4,000 of subsidized money available to them. This is because the government has an aggregate limit that they set for borrowing. But we will be aware of that and we will take that into consideration when we um, figure out the financial aid for students who are in a five-year program and get to that point. For students that are transfer students, it's important to know that you, how much you've borrowed coming into Philadelphia University because, again, the aggregate limit um, is set for all, all schools that you may have borrowed at, which is $23,000 of subsidized loan. So um, you can um, find out if you, how much you have borrowed to this point, but just keep in mind that there is a limit. To move forward with um, the processing of the Federal Direct Stafford Loan, the student needs to fill out a master promissory note. The promissory note can be filled out at www.studentloans.gov. This master promissory note, again, this is for the student, it only needs to be filled out one time and it's good for 10 years. So the student will fill that out when they're a freshman and they won't have to fill this out again um, as long as they complete their um, studies before 10 years period. Uh, for first time Stafford borrowers, they will, students will also have to complete an entrance interview. The entrance interview is done at the same site that you're going to complete the master promissory note. But just realize if a student has a Perkins loan and a Stafford loan, they have to do two separate entrance interviews. This is to ensure that the student realizes that they are borrowing a loan and they um, need to repay that at some point. So um, in terms of the Stafford loan, um, all these forms and processes need to be completed before we can give you credit for the loan on your bill. And um, so please make sure that you do um, do this before um, July. Um, also keep in mind that there will be fees that will be deducted from the Stafford loan in the amount of 1.05%. So the government will take that right off the top, even though the student is responsible for the entire amount that they are borrowing. For students that have the unsubsidized loan, um, you don't have to do a separate master promissory note. It's the same master promissory note for both programs. The eligibility differentiation comes um, from the financial aid office and you will see that in your financial aid award letter. You can um, elect at any point to um, not accept any type of loan um, and there is a form enclosed in your packet to allow you to um, turn down any type of loan that we may have um, offered to you. For um, Families that may have had a um, PLUS loan listed as part of their financial aid award. Um, the PLUS loan um, is a parent loan. PLUS stands for Parent Loan for Undergraduate Students. Eligibility for the PLUS loan is um, based on your credit. So what will happen when you complete your PLUS application, the um, government will run a credit check, and if you pass that, 
you will be eligible for the PLUS loan. You can borrow up to the cost of attendance minus any financial aid that the student is receiving. Um, and many of you will see that we estimated an amount on your package to help round out the cost that um, you will need to pay to attend Philadelphia University. The interest rate for the PLUS loan is a fixed rate at 7.9%. The PLUS loan requires the parent to do their own master promissory note at the same website that the student will um, complete their master promissory note. Realize these are two separate forms. One is for the parent. The Stafford loan is for the student. The MPN for the PLUS loan, like the Stafford loan, is good for 10 years. The only in, if you continue to borrow in subsequent years, you will need to do an update to your credit check and um, you do not need to complete another master promissory note. If you have more than one child in college and you're borrowing a PLUS loan for each, you need to do a separate master promissory note for each child. Okay, and all of these forms need to be filled out before we would credit your bill. So if you think you want to apply for the PLUS loan, you should do so in the next um, couple of months. Okay, the PLUS loan repayment begins 60 days after we receive the full amount of the PLUS loan. So half of the amount of the PLUS loan you borrow will come in the fall semester, and the other half will come in the spring semester. At that point, the loan will go into repayment. The government allows you to delay the payments until after the student graduates if you choose to. You don't have to, but you can. And we recommend that you at least pay the interest while you go along because the interest will capitalize and you'll end up paying a lot more money back when you do go into repayment. You have 10 years to repay the PLUS loan and the PLUS fees that are taken right off the top, like the Stafford loans, are 4.2%. Okay, for um, students that were awarded work study, um, this is a part-time job on campus in most instances. We do have some jobs that are off campus in community service um, areas, but most of the positions are here on campus. Work study is um, paid at the rate of $7.25 an hour to start, and usually a $2,000 work study award will translate to about 10 hours a week of work. The um, process that the student will need to um, complete is to fill out a student employment application, which um, is listed on our website. The link is there under um, work study. And the student can complete that form. We will use that form to place students in jobs. We will notify the student about their job assignment um, about one week before school starts through their Philadelphia University email account. Uh, I always say this is the most important thing about work study is to note that work study is not deducted from your tuition bill. Work study is paid to the student as they work. So if a student opts to not accept their work study award, they will not see any of those monies um, credited to them. So again, work study is a part-time job and like any part-time job, the student gets paid for the hours they work and the student gets paid every two weeks and um, this helps with incidental expenses that the student will have as they go through the, um, the academic year. Many students have, that are from Pennsylvania may have been awarded an um, estimated FIA grant. FIA stands for Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency. These are awards that are um, given based on need to Pennsylvania residents. It's important to note that FIA, while they use their FAFSA form to determine eligibility, will also send you um, a form via email to ask about additional um, information. So please make sure that you do complete that process. Without completing their, their process, which is different from our processes, you will not be able to um, get awarded a, a state grant. So again, state grants are for um, Pennsylvania residents. They're need-based. And um, we have estimated awards on the financial aid letter. If you, we think you are eligible, we um, get some guidance from FIA um, as we go into our awarding cycle to help determine um, who we think will get a FIA grant. 
but FIA will actually notify you directly after May 1st, after the state has firmed up their budget, and um, the communication will come directly from FIA, and then we will update your um, financial aid information with the actual award that they will give to you. The um, state grants are also awarded um, by the semester, and um, we will credit them that way once they are awarded. For um, students that are from other states, some other states do have reciprocal agreements with Pennsylvania. The, um, unfortunately, New York and New Jersey do not. So those of you that are from those states, um, we are aware of that when we figure out your financial aid package and you are not penalized for that. Um, some states do have this reciprocal agreement and you can check with your high school guidance office or with your state grant agency directly to see if the grant is transferable and if it is how much would go out of state. Students that uh, may have been awarded an athletic scholarship, um, those determinations are made by the um, athletic department and you would have received a separate notification that is signed by our athletic director as well as by me and um, there are terms and conditions that the student needs to comply with to um, fulfill the athletic um, piece of the award. The award for um, the athletic monies will be credited um, like the other pieces of aid, half in the fall and half in the spring. Some types of other awards that we um, control here at Philadelphia University, uh, Phi Theta Kappa scholarship is given to transfer students who are members of the Phi Theta Kappa. Those awards would be um, sent to you under separate cover from our admissions office and those awards would be renewable each year as long as the student maintains a specific grade point average and those would also be included as part of your financial aid award letter. Um, some students have eligibility for some of our endowed and gift scholarships. Most of these um, funds are awarded to returning students but there are some that are specifically earmarked for freshmen and if you were awarded an endowed or gift scholarship you would have probably receive a separate letter um, from me as well explaining the terms and conditions of those awards. Those um, endowed and gift scholarships are um, very specific in most instances about major, um, about grades, about where students are from, and this is um, based on the donor's um, requirements. So we um, have to answer to that specific requirement and we would award them as um, deemed necessary. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about next steps. Um, we'll talk a little bit about our tuition and fees. So the figures that are on the screen are the current figures. These are not the figures for the upcoming year. The um, new award tuition and fees amount have not been released yet. While um, tuition listed on the screen is $31,874 and the residence hall, traditional hall, which is where the freshmen will live, the rate is $5,032 and the meal plan is $5,146 totaling $42,148. Um, we are anticipating a 3.5% increase to these figures, although they haven't been released yet. We have been using those figures in the calculation of your financial aid package. So we were aware of um, the proposed tuition increase, it's just it hasn't been finalized yet. So um, this will give you a, um, a basis for moving forward. We also have enclosed in your packet a calculation worksheet and um, that will be updated once the tuition um, is released and we have that form on our website as well. So um, that will help you try to um, figure out what will be owed um, after aid has been deducted. And here is the worksheet, sample worksheet. You all received that is in your um, folder. But um, again, we will update that once we do have the um, actual new figures released. But you can um, anticipate a 3.5% increase on top of what is here. So in terms of using this form, 
Um, you can start with the figures and add the increase. You can um, fill in the blank with um, taking your grants and scholarships and placing them in the um, appropriate line. The loans you can put there too if you are accepting them, totaling them, and subtracting them from the charges. And then we come down to what the financing options are. So you can choose to um, take out a PLUS loan. Um, you can um, use the tuition management systems um, payment plan, which um, we had a um, folder included in your packet that would talked about that. You can use personal resources, and um, you can also check into um, alternative loans. So to go into a little more detail, the payment plan is operated by a private company that we work with, Tuition Management Systems. The payment plan allows you to spread your payments over 10 months. So instead of paying in the balance in two equal installments, this allows you to pay over 10 months. There is a slight enrollment fee for um, participation in the payment plan, and no interest is charged. The um, payments will begin in July, so it's a little bit sooner than your tuition bill is due. And um, information, again, was included in your folder. You will also be receiving a mailing directly from Tuition Management Systems in um, probably sometime in April or May, and that will allow you enough time to decide if you will participate in that program. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about alternative loans. These are loans that are available through private lenders, and these are loans that the student can borrow in their name. The student needs a creditworthy co-signer to um, participate in the um, alternative loan program. Lenders do not singly lend to students any longer. The co-signer does not have to be a parent. But it's important to realize that the co-signer does have responsibility for the loan if the student does not repay. We have a list on our website of lenders that our students have used the most in the prior three years. So if you think you want to go that route, you can use that as a reference point. You're free to use any lender that you would choose to use. And um, once that loan is sent through, we will certify it but I would caution you to make sure you're fully aware of all the interest rates, the repayment terms, um, all of the financial things that go into borrowing through an alternative loan. So what has to happen next in terms of your award letter? You need to um, accept the pieces of aid that you are choosing to accept, sign and return one copy to the financial aid office, Remember, this does not obligate you to attend Philadelphia University. You'll keep one copy for your records, and you can also view your award letter on WebAdvisor. Going forward, as you move through your academic career here at Philadelphia University, we will send you an electronic award letter. So after the freshman year, we will no longer send you a paper award letter, but we will send a postcard home telling the parents that the award letter is available to view. So um, at this point in time, if you um, would sign the award letter and send it back, that will let us know where you stand with the financial aid. The um, appeal process um, involves many different types of circumstances. So first I'm going to explain the appeal that would um, relate to changes in circumstances. So if your um, financial situation has changed since you filed the FAFSA, or since the end of 2012. We would need some additional information from you, but we can make available to you the process where we can look at your current situation. So for instance, if um, a parent lost their job, if you lost even part-time income since the end of the year, if your marital status has changed, um, you can update us with the appropriate information. We would ask you to complete an income reduction form, which is available on our website. We can also send it to you. And we would ask you to give us your um, projected income that would go through the calendar year 2013. 
We also want a written explanation as to what changed, and we're going to ask you for a copy of your tax return from last year. And we will process that and send you a response and let you know if your eligibility for financial aid has increased. There are also appeals where students may have um, different awards from other schools. So we do ask you, as you're comparing your awards from the other schools, to take into consideration the costs of the school. So a more expensive school will most likely give you more financial aid. Um, just as you compare, that is an important piece of information. If you do have awards that are comparable to, um, from schools that are comparable in terms of cost, you can submit an appeal to me and attach copies of your award letters from the other schools. We will review them and respond to you and let you know um, if there is additional money available for you. If you find there are other extenuating circumstances that are not incorporated into the FAFSA filing or things that you think that we need to know in making our financial aid determination, you would need to send a letter to me and it will be reviewed and we will see what impact that would have on your financial aid package. If it's something that you, um, you obviously all have received your financial aid awards at this point, but going forward, if there's things that you find in completing your initial FAFSA that um, aren't reflected in there that you need to tell us about, send a letter to me um, or an email explaining what the um, situation is. And again, we will respond to every um, communication that we receive. So for students that um, did submit a, an appeal um, letter or are planning to, our first review of the appeals will be done beginning April 9th. And we will respond to um, the appeals as they come in. And you will get a response from us in writing one way or the other. OK, so now we're going to move to the question phase of the um, presentation. But I'll close with our contact information. Um, you can get in touch with us via phone, email, or um, we have the 800 number listed there. Every um, student has a financial aid counselor. The counselors are assigned based on the first initial of the student's last name. So if a student's last name begins with be, between A to F, counselor is Beck Gussler. If your last name begins with G to M, it's Brian Blackburn. And if the last name begins N to Z, the counselor is Suzanne Mack. And remember, that's the student's last name. Sometimes the parents have different last names, so it's the student's last name. Um, so feel free to call us or contact us with any questions that you have as you go through the, um, the process. And um, we're here to help you and here to um, help make a confusing uh, financial aid process less confusing. OK, so now we'll try to answer some of the questions um, that you've been submitting as, you've, as I've been talking. Um, OK, so Andrew asked, um, we qualify for the Yellow Ribbon Program. How do we get enrolled? Um, you would need to fill out um, some forms. Um, our VA rep here at Philadelphia University is Ron Dawson. He's my associate director in the financial aid office. And if you um, would send him an email, he will get back in touch with you about more information about Yellow Ribbon. OK, let's see. Um, Um, Laura asks, are work-study awards subject to taxation? Um, they are subject to, um, to taxes, yes. The, um, some of the, the city wage tax will be taken out of the work-study award, as well as some of the, the state taxes. The student may, um, depending on their other earnings within the, the year, they may not have to pay federal taxes, um, depending on what their um, total earnings are. But yes, there are taxes taken out of the work-study award. OK, Lisa asks, if you're from out of state, is it true after three years of living on campus, are you eligible for in-state tuition? Philadelphia University is a private school. So our students pay, everyone pays the same rate, whether you are from 
Pennsylvania or from another state. So we don't differentiate where you are from in terms of the tuition that you would pay um, to us. So just keep that in mind. Um, Richard asks, when does the state of Pennsylvania make decisions on FIA grants? Um, sometime after May 1st, the state will send out notifications. The um, awarding of the FIA grant is based on the passing of the state budget. So um, we should hear some of that chatter pick up in the next um, month or so. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll get a, um, an award structure out there um, as close to May 1st as, um, as possible. Uh, it's moving. <laughs> um, OK. Can my child get a job on campus if they were not a word of work study from Sally? Um, good question, Sally. Our first priority will be to the students that were awarded work study. Um, students can stop into the financial aid office once they're on campus if they were not awarded work study. And we will see if positions are available. But our first priority goes to students who do have work study. So um, just make sure that your student comes to the financial aid office and we will get them to fill out the documents that we need. Um, Richard writes, how many hours per week would a typical work study entail? Um, generally, work study positions would be about 10 hours a week. Some are less, some are more. Um, your student may opt to work fewer hours, but if they do, um, they may not earn the amount of their work study award. Different jobs will have different um, hour, hourly requirements or weekly requirements. So. Um, the average, though, is 10 hours a week. Zachary S. asks, can I still apply for a FIA grant? The um, application for a FIA grant would come via the FAFSA form. So when you indicate on your FAFSA form that you are from Pennsylvania, then um, that will send the information to FIA. Again, FIA will send you a, an additional form via email that you need to complete, and um, then they will make their determination of your eligibility. So there is not an actual application for the FIA grant. It's just your FAFSA form. Maria writes, do I know if Virginia has reciprocity with its state grants? Um, not to my knowledge. I've not seen any, so I would presume that they do not. But you can check with your state grant. Um, organization, or again, your high school guidance counselor should know this information. Um, Ram writes, what exactly is a faculty scholarship? The faculty scholarship and the faculty grant are our academic scholarships, and eligibility for those are based on the students' SAT scores and high school grade point average. Notification of those comes soon after the acceptance to the university, and those letters are signed by um, Greg Potts, our Director of Admissions. And again, the awards would be specified for either four or five years, depending on the program that the student is in. OK. Um, let's see. OK. Um, Lisa writes, if we were waiting for a response from an appeal, should we wait to send in the signed financial aid letter until we get the reply of the appeal? Um, that's, that's your call in terms of when you send that in. If you sign the letter, um, you're not um, precluding yourself from any additional money that would be coming. So it's fine to send it in now. And then if we, um, when we send you the response from your appeal, we would send out a new financial aid letter to you. Um, let's see. Um, Sally asks, do all freshmen live in one residence hall? Are freshmen given a choice of dorms? Um, we have all of our freshman students living on the same side of campus, but they're not all in one residence hall. Um, but they are in close proximity to one another. OK, let's see. Richard writes, would a FIA grant reduce school financial aid? 
we um, would know about the FIA grant eligibility, at least we hope we know, um, there, there would be a rare instance where a FIA grant would reduce our, the financial aid that we already provided to you. So we um, try as best we can to incorporate all the pieces of aid that we're aware of into the financial aid award that we send to you. If you receive a scholarship or a grant from an outside organization that is substantial, that may cause a reduction in the institutional or the school financial aid. Um, but generally, a FIA grant would not do that. Um, let's see. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your name. It's Stephanie, um, if we receive money from scholarships from our hometown after sending the Philadelphia University Award letter in, can we still let you know if we are awarded money after May 1st? Yes. Um, so if you receive an outside scholarship, and many times you don't know about those until around graduation time, then um, when you know about them, let us know and we will let you know if there is an impact to the financial aid package that we've sent to you. Um, okay, Patrick, you said that the students get paid directly from work study, so do they have to pay the work study portion themselves? Um, the work study portion, um, while it is part of the financial aid award, does not come off the student's bill as a credit. So the student will work, earn the money, and get paid, but the money to pay the bill has to be paid by the time um, the due date on the bill, which will be the beginning of August. So um, the work study award does give the student money for living expenses, but the bill has to be paid um, up front. So that will not show up as a credit on your tuition bill. Um, Zachary asked, do I advise coming in and meeting with a financial aid counselor? That is totally up to you. Um, we are available. The counselors are available. If you would like to come in and meet with a financial aid counselor, you are welcome to. You can call and speak to them on the phone if, that's, if that works better for you. But depending on what your issues are and your concerns, um, I would say we're available if you would like us to meet with you. Otherwise, um, you can communicate and um, talk to us either on the phone or email, but um, however you would like to talk to us, we are available. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm not getting a lot of more questions, Greg. Okay, so if you have additional questions um, going forward or think of something after we're done here, you can send um, questions to um, what was it? admissions at phillyu.edu or you can send them to the financial aid um, address listed on the screen and um, we will answer them for you. Okay, so um, thank you for participating, and um, again, if you have any additional questions, please be in touch with us, and um, thanks for taking the time out of your evening to um, spend that with us.